you have been able to notify all the board members of this meeting for the day. The only thing changed as far as the location. Okay. And the reason for the change because we have all the voting in the building and the space not available. So for the record we could uh none of that any no problem or discussion. So again good morning again on the website and call the rookie. One more. Roll call. Mr. Delbert and Bert Brown. Here. Mr. Brown President. Mr. Roland Molinar. Here. Roland Molinar President. Mrs. Dick Harris Moorhead. Mr. President. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before we go any further, we can introduce the board members and staff. Employee that Mr. Alexander is here. <coughs> and the uh, concern this morning of the item 4 of the agenda of business and reporting machines added in 2014, yes to 100 and retained expecting. Ms. Fox is in here. Ms. Fox is in here to give us a report. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Harris Moore had just walked in. We have all seven members present. Right. Yes, sir. So, so this is just to that the normal practices are asked the audience or the media or anybody who's going to be back there. So we could do that. Any members from the media here? You want to put the name? Are you doing something else? Be here and don't give the name anyway. So any media person here want to give a name? Erica Parsons, News 2. Marvin Ford with VI Action Group, Inc. Bill Carter with VI So. So, uh, as I said earlier in the item, A and the new business, you're supposed to have a report from the testing and certification of the DS to run the results. So, anyone remember here to pay to? The audit and the, the data report after that to verify or what you call the report the testing machines to see if they were accurate. So the, 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 okay, I'm confused because what I'm saying is that the, the last meeting that we had, there was a report provided that spoke to the actual audit that was done that was um, <coughs> determined by the joint board to, to, to conduct. So I don't know if we can test it or add it Mr. Rossi, I'm reading the document on my desk at the station that says, the Inquiry District Board of Election Summary of Primary Audit. Election Audit. Is this is it over here? Yes, sir. Well, um, I'm just going to suppose that before. Um, my question is um, I, I received a copy of this prior to this meeting. And I, I reviewed it, and I don't have any problems with the report, so uh, is there anything um, in motion? Mr. So, so what's up? You, you don't have the minutes on the last name? We have the minutes. What about the um, so, okay. motion? Excuse me, before we go to the... Everything I know. Mr. Alexander, can you speak to this issue, please? Uh, from the last meeting, the October 1st meeting, are uh, we gave the date or just... Show a specific date. 
and everybody package is going to what the Dr. Ra said. Basically, this is the summary of what happened. In other words, when the, the three polling places were selected, was from the last meeting was the um, St. Gerard, F. Williams, and the Florence A. Williams. And when you check Mr. Molinari, Member Ross, Member Bolado, and Member Webster were present, when they check the machine, they verify that all the ballots were coming before the machine. That's what the report basically states. Yeah. And the accounting of the missing ballot for the MP, what is the result of that? Since I wasn't there. No. Remember, you remember the situation that was supposed to be for Mr. Ford and Peterson actually didn't drop the ballot where it was supposed to be. Anybody asked the correct situation other than what was in the ballot machine? So those speaks right now, nobody that was there saw the kind of amount of ballots in the machine could account for those ballots that was taken out of the box when Mr. Ford and Peterson disappeared from it. Where, where is the reason? Yes, sir. At, at what precinct would that have occurred? He was walking, voting, walking, voting, oh. where when we were checking oh. the envelopes yeah. and affidavits, we discovered that the envelope with the name of Odell Peterson had the envelope with the name of it alone, a signature, an initial by one of the workers who told us that they, that she told Ms. Peterson and her friend, they cannot leave with the envelope, they have to drop it in the back. Thereafter, the young lady said, see, you make me do stupid, so now we have to go back inside. And we went back inside, the only thing that was found in the ballot box of myself and Mr. Lado and Neil and Mr. West was there, was the envelope and missing was the affidavit and the ballot that was absent. The Point of information? This is Bellado. Mr. Chairman, I remember the conversation very vividly. We at that time felt well, the members present uh, felt that that was an issue that should be dealt with after the primary and everything was over. And we directed you to go and do whatever you have to do to write a letter to the Attorney General, take the case to the Attorney General, and deal with the Attorney General or the court. Well, are you, are you the expert in court? I don't know much about it. But we give you that directive, and as far as I know, and I think that somebody else can, can vouch with me, we told you to go ahead and do what you have to do to bring that person before the court so that she can be charged with whatever charge, whatever federal fraud or, or whatever, but you were directed to do that. Now, tell us what you have done. Now, before we see this, Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Webster is sitting right here, and we know the rules of the court says you have a due process procedure. The board must decide what the board wants to do as far as asking Ms. Peterson. Let them know what happened. Mr. Webster prepared the correspondence. Were you there prepared the correspondence, Mr. Webster? Yes, I did. And he was preparing the correspondence. So all those things were prepared, except that when they have meetings, members will say they cannot come because we're wasting time. So if they're not there, I alone cannot decide to do anything about the Peterson activity. The board must look at what Mr. Webster wrote and proceed from the file. That's what happened. Mr. Mr. Terrence is more ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. question. Um, I don't know if you said it and I missed it. What school was she supposed to go to? Walk in. She walked into the office. Oh, walked into the office. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I walked over the box. Okay. Allegedly. As a matter of fact, there was an issue that was in contention when it came to the certification because there was a mention made on the final report for the certification of that situation and it was removed from the report to be certified. I think we call that clear. So as it is, when we have our next meeting again, we bring forward the correspondence we paid by Mr. Webster, the chairman, we proceed from the um, issue. Question, um, <coughs> I, I brought up the fact to see. You, you said the information prepared by Mr. Webster? To yeah, I don't that. No, my question is this. Um, remember, a lot of spoke to the fact that those of you who are present whenever that conversation took place, that was not an official meeting. No. Number one, number two. It was a direction given to the chair. When um, we were dealing with the process of counting the working ballot, and at the end of the situation, 
when we found out that we had to count every ballot and that ballot uh, was missing, that's when we found out the problem and we all decided something has to be done right. so that the people can respect the system and we directed the chairman to go ahead and do what he have to do um, and then let us know. For me, I would have thought he would have taken all the steps to deal with it and then bring it to us and then move forward. So I don't know why we are going into this situation again. My question, my question again is, um, that action took place while the process of counting walking out. Yes. Counting the counting. Correct. And um, the, the conversation that was had with you, I guess, and Ms. Ocean and the chair of was present when Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Okay. Well, 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 anyway, I heard it. I heard it. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. 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 Um, we all were in agreement okay. Okay. that something should be done. And um, if it's a fraud, we need to go to court and we, we allow the chairman to go ahead and do what he had to do. Right. But, but at the end of the day, um, obviously, that didn't take place. So. Hello. At the end of the day, for the record, there was oh, no meeting to have a forum. Yeah. There was people sitting up, <laughs> conversing back. There was no meeting to have a forum. And if I tell you for this, please, so it is clear that Mr. Webster, who was here, also wrote what we discovered. So for the record, unless we plan it, we forget. Since you and Mr. Ross were not there, if you remember, you have a portion and official report that was typed by Mrs. Whitaker making a mention of Nota Bene telling all of us about the certification, meaning that everything is on the report is factual and true. I know that it was written on there that Mrs. Walter Peterson did not put the affidavit and the ballot as it was supposed to, but rather the empty envelope was there. That notation was removed from the report and I said, I am not signing a certification for anything to be true when you all take it off. Mr. Raymond Will, the one that said that the Lord Adam Miller says that he should not be there. And that's how it ended up. And that's why I did not sign the certification of the report with the prime because it missing pertinent information because I want to see how I could go to court to tell a judge or any jury that I complaining that the members of the vote certify a document that was not accurate Taking off the information was the appeal to go to court and try to get what you can prove and find support. This is more hidden. I thought I understood you to say that when we have a next meeting that Mr. Webster will bring That's what I said, but. Yeah. So we could meet on it. So can we discuss what this Well, they want to create that sort of way. Before we do that, uh, Ms. Mohead. Again, Mr. Chairman, you went ahead and put that remark in a report that was supposed to be strictly certifying the, the, the election and the counting of the ballot. It was inappropriate to have that section in that report. You should have written a letter, like you said, Mr. Webster is going to, was responsible of doing a letter, and then attach it to that report so it could have been an attachment instead of a part of the certification of ballot that was counted. So let's not mix apple and oranges together. We felt that they should not be in the report because it was not a part of the of the accounting and of the ballot. It was another report, and you should have had that letter as an attachment. So let, let's move on now. We can move well, on. I want us to move on intelligently and understandably. If we don't understand the word certification, we are right to name. Mr. Ross and Mrs. Mohit could not certify anything because they did not witness anything. They certified what we, who was canvassing, gave to them. If we remove a pertinent missing document that is supposed to be the property of the election process, it should have been an document from Board Bryan to sign I certify the information bearing to be accurate and true. It was not accurate what we know, the four of us knew. That Mr. 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 Chairman, we cannot certify a ballot accounted for if the ballot was not there. If it is missing, that's what you can account you know, for all the ballots. This is the problem with you, Mr. Chairman, and I don't want to argue. You always leave when important oh. things are happening, then you come and question the procedure, and then you refuse to sign because so and so and so. 
But I would have not signed that report if you had put for the previous scenario because there was no ballot to be accounted for. It was a missing ballot. You hear what you just said? A ballot to account for. How are you going to be sorry if I had a ballot to account for? So Let's just move on. Because we table this in the next yeah, 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 yeah. I have a letter then and we put it. I have a letter already, but I have it physically very right to read. No, yeah. but the record has to be straight. I have to be straight. Yeah, we take it. 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 But who makes it right when the record speaks for Senator Salim? The record does not have all the certification, does not have all the ballot was missing. You there know was who... only one bar questionable ballot. And, and who was it? That though? questionable ballot could not be placed on that report because we can say 270 ballot and model ballot motion. was included. Make the motion. Now, this really step on the move. Go ahead. Motion. Motion to table this discussion to the next meeting where we could really. Dispense of this situation. Motion. Second. Roll call. Super Amendment. Amendment. Motion. Amendment. I would like to amend this motion that today, with seven of us present, again direct the chair to deal with a letter to whoever needs to go to deal with this situation. I so move. <laughs> There was no second motion last roll call and amendment. And a motion. Mr. Tyrell Alexander, who is excellent, can take care of both of them. Mr. Alexander, I'm going to consist of Mr. Alexander to the board. I will ask Mr. Alexander, the employee of the board. Don't, nobody going to pass on the job of the supervisor or the deputy supervisor to Mr. Tyrell. He is not the employee of the system. He works for the board. That was the question. Right. So the record is so that no official set supervisor was 
Okay. Told us we would go meet St. Donald's during election. Mrs. Whitaker is there, and none of them could give me some. Alexander Henry shot up before I'm giving shots. Mr. Ross, you said something? Yeah, I'd like to move this. Uh, I'd like to move that uh, we accept the. I like to move that we accept the, the primary election um, audit report as prepared and submitted by the staff. Second. Move second. Any objection? Here now, the quorum number seven being present, so I'll. Uh, next item on the agenda was the Procedure for maintaining secure laws about the participation. The item B, the procedure for maintaining secure early voting procedures. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I believe that this um, item B. Uh, is obsolete. It shouldn't be discussed today because early voting started. Uh, we had a lot of uh, a little problems that we had to take care of. And of course, you were not there to assist us. Uh, the, the voting went very early. Voting went very well. The procedure for maintaining and secure the, the ballots and the bins and, and, the, and the procedure has been put in place. So I think that I would like to make a motion to disregard number B. Objection. Thank you. Before we, go to, before we go to the motion, Mr. Williams. We need security in our building. We need police presence in there. Can we finish, please? We'll discuss police presence, but the procedure is going great. And you could scream what you want. I'm not going to get that to your level, Mr. Webster, but <laughs> the procedure went very well. You could never get to my level. You understand? Know, okay. Thank you. Hello, could you please? You don't have the cabinet. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, please. Please. Okay. Please. Okay. Please. Please. Okay. Please. Okay. The motion is out of order because you said it was problems. We need to have a start with what the problems were. The problems were solved. Well, could you tell the board member what the problems were, please, Mrs. O'Neill? I, 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 I give the, the, my time to Mr. Molina because he's the one that... Except that Mr. Molina did anything wrong. You were the one that uttered the yeah, problem. Yes, I am. I am releasing my time to Mr. So, Mr. Mr. Molina, you tell us a problem that she's speaking the motion. At this moment, I decline. Okay. Let me finish. I decline until we have a walk-in meeting to discuss this problem or okay. issue. All right, good. And then present it to the public. And then we look at that, Ms. O'Neill, Vice Chairman, to put something in writing so that we look at the problems that have been corrected in the walk-in meeting. Mrs. Mohit. Um, yeah, question. Is, to my way of thinking, however y'all think, the procedure for maintaining the discussion, isn't it something that should be had with the joint board because we're trying to make the procedures consistent. I mean, we run our election over here, they run theirs over there, but we should be uh, in sync and on the same page with the procedures. So my suggestion would be that we're trying to get a joint board meeting together as quickly as possible that we table this and we we'll speak with the joint board. I said, well, don't know what's happening. You make a no, it's a suggestion. It's like, but, you know, I'm asking how everybody else feels about it because I don't see how we can discuss it in isolation of knowing that they're on the same page because you don't want a discrepancy in that procedure. Okay. No problem. Except Mrs. Moore and members here, I have been reading a procedure of the joint board or early voting. And I think sometimes when some of us sit down and clapped without planning, we create bigger problems for the function. As an example, I read a procedure signed by Ms. Wells and Mr. Wapinton, stating in, in essence that no member of the board seeking re-election can be in the board of election after June early voting. Now, I can interpret that to mean that I don't have to go in that building I'm not permitting the way all the voting is going on. And if you're voting only in a building, consider now beyond the building for all the voting on election day, which can tell me that on election day, myself or Mr. Williams or Mr. Ross shouldn't be on the polling plane because voting is going on there in a larger scheme. We put barriers sometimes and we don't think about these things. This, besides that, vote while they run for election. The governor don't come out of the office 
and have an acting governor. So I don't know who brought up the bright idea to prohibit people who seeking re-election from being in the building. So it means that Mr. Webster, Mr. Lee, Mr. Mohenda, Mr. Manila will have to manage all the So how are we going to correct that? And they have a joint board to correct it now because since it was a joint board policy that was signed, and that's the council was asking all the time, the first time that issue was raised. And we end up in a problem with it right now. Mr. Molina, sorry, Mr. I have just one. You said you saw a policy? I, I haven't seen this policy. No, no, the policy. No, the, no, the port, well, to deal with the um, early voting policy. That's what that, and that's yes. in here? Yes. That portion? Yes. I wish you could no, tell about it. I'm mean, come to you, Mr. Molina. I mean, barring you. Well, I'll have it here. Yes, that. it is. So you want to do all the voting policy? Joint board number nine. No electioneering allowed at all voting sites and campaign free zone will be established. Can I see a piece of that? I'll read it, I'll read it on the record. And uh, uh, campaign free zones will be established based on each district board's determination. No current member of the board of election running for re election is allowed to participate or be in the election system up to an early voting hour. So that means to me that myself, Mr. William, and Mr. Ross shouldn't be in the board of election all the time when the votes are going on, but candidates that have never been in the board can be in there, and candidates who are watchers can be in the board. And again, I'm saying when the election come November, myself, Mr. William, and Mr. Ross can remain outside from the polling place because I already established there are bigger voting population in each district all your places that you have in the office. So you're putting them there to get people, one person, everybody here caught up in that. So the four people will have to manage, monitor all the polling places. I hope I have to get it done well. Sit here. Sorry. Pass it on. And you're signed by Mr. Washington and Ms. Alicia was as chairman of the joint board. When did you receive this? I had it when everybody got one. I just come back here. Like you said, we got one. Where? I'm not saying you got one. I got one because I, I, I got this document before. Was well, Mr. Williams? Somebody had to vote on that for the common policy. When you say vote on it, you mean a joint board yeah. voted on that? That's why you understand. Because it could not come a policy by Ms. Wells and Mr. Washington alone making it a policy. It had to be done by a quorum president with at least three members of each district and eight members out of the 14 there. So this is the document here. So if we say now that these two people put it together, I don't know when this vote was taken, but I know for a fact I objected to that from the BIT meeting when we were discussing about the machines and the equipment and the courses. Mr. Neil asked, she was suggesting that no member should be in the polling. Mr. Ross was asked if he can find it in the corner. Say he can going to find it because it's not there. Okay, no, and I, we I, never I, got no way. But I see this now when I came back here and I read these things. Maybe I read a lot of things sometimes if you don't think I'll be watching them. So that's all I can hear. So, yes, Ms. Mohan, sorry. <laughs> um, three, three things. One, the police put on the record what the date that was signed. I wasn't. 16. Of what? Um, about October? Yes, you mean the, that policy? Yeah. I wasn't there. I'm just trying to... No, no. It was October 16, 2014. Mr. Okay. Signed it by dated October 10th. <coughs> dated October 10, 2014. Signed by Alicia Wells, Chairman, Joint Chair, October 16, six days later. And again, Mr. Watlington Jr. So that was subsequent to the last joint board meeting in St. Thomas. Well, okay. All right. Well, again, I wasn't there, but this is. I think. I mean, I agree with the two things that you said that it is a problem, and I also agree with the fact that it has to be resolved by the joint board. You said it was in. So. Oh, right. You send it or whatever, or we'll be fine. Because I thought the intention was that. People who, because it's always been an unwritten policy, people who are seeking the election would not be present in the room where people were voting, as opposed to, or, you know, in the polling places, just like somebody could come, for instance, when uh, we did Henderson, um, the Senate president came, he didn't obviously vote in St. Croix, but we didn't allow him to go in the area well, where people room. were voting, but he was in the room for, you know, a couple of minutes, and then he left, and he actually had somebody who was rest in his, you know, campaign stuff, and we, Mr. Ross had to have her removed, but 
Um, there's never been an instance since I've been on, on the board where members who are seeking re-election can't participate in the process of setting up polls and manning polls. What they have absent themselves from, and myself when it, it involved me, is the actual counting of votes you know, at the end of the process. So I think it could be refined to say in the voting area or whatever as opposed to the building. I, think well, I don't have a power to say the numbers is moving, but the problem is I see sometimes when things are written and suggested, a lot of us sometimes will make a suggested recommendation to regulate or delay some participation. So this way this is written means that four people it. have to count the absentee ballot, four people have to go through those ballots in the position, and they will be the four to certify. So none of us, Mr. Ross, Mr. Williams, but who are seeking re-election, elected or not, cannot certify something that we took I process. understand that. That's why I agree with you. So there would be no further debate because what ha needs to happen, as you said, the other thing I'm agreeing with you is that it has to be resolved on the joint board issue because this was a policy that the joint board adopted. I wasn't there to take place in the, you know, take part in the vote. I don't know who voted, how many people voted for. Well, I wasn't there and I wasn't voting on that. I made it because well, of Well, fine. And I wouldn't have either. But, you know, and since it is a policy, the only way it can be changed is through the joint board. So for us so to discuss it could for the next then, 45 minutes. Could we then try to get in touch with Mrs. Wells to convene a joint board meeting to let her know that that thing needs to be resolved? There are other things that the joint board needs to deal with. Well, do we do this one particular instance, for sure. But I don't have no problem in not going to election board office for any reason. Well, I don't have no problem with staying home in election and going to vote and walk out the building. But four people have to man the polls, and four people have to certify the election, and four individuals in the same credit will have to come with their walk in and absentee and those ballots that have been okay, posted in the machine. So, more shot. Motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ross, I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry 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 i Motion. Mm -hmm. as soon as Wait a second. Yes, Mrs. O'Neill. Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I just want to go on record stating that when I asked the question of whether those people running should be part of the uh, process, um, and I said they should be closed, well, I was told that no, there is no policy, but to protect the integrity of the system, which can recluse themselves, don't get involved in counting the ballot, don't get involved in touching the ballot, but can be there to observe and to see what's happening, and that's exactly what happened in the primary. So this so, uh, policy, uh, I don't know how it comes, but I go along with the motion that... The government is speaking, you understand? There is a motion. There is not a motion. You just make a motion and give seconds, right? You need to learn your Robert Rules. You need to learn your Robert Rules. You need to learn your Robert Rules. Point of point of order. Member Webster is being very disrespectful and that has to stop. Member um um Bilada is speaking. There's a motion on the floor, and but she is discussing the contents of the motion. You cannot, you're not the chairman to determine what is said and when you don't move the roll call without the chairman's consent. You don't know that. I need to ask you about that. What the hell are you doing for that? Hello, 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 hello. Let's maintain some little. I think I'm the one usually at two that being the shortest. Because we finish things. That in place, and I go along with Mr. Williams, Mr. Webster. I've been cursing our mother, calling us all F and F, and I think we have to discipline him. And you are a liar. So we move on, please. That's what you're being. Let me just say something to it. I am saying, I'm going face like you're ready for coughing. You need to go in and dance. Okay? Hello. Okay, okay, let's do the thing. Let's go. Let's take a five minutes, she said. Before I get any worse.
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a joke. You know what I'm saying? It's my trick. Huh? We're out there right now. We're out there right now. I'm saying. I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to play this. I say we're out there right now. You better not talk about it again. Because this is out there right now. If I sit up with my comments on it, I will tell you. This is out there right yeah, uh, that nonsense. Yeah. 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 These two guys are not for weeks, for months, and some other than that. I can't hold you. These are adults. These are adults. I can't do this. We say that's a regular practice. Yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. You don't have to discipline the board. I'm saying, on the board. Just the same one as the Thomas board discipline the board. We need to do that. was to have the joint board share to convene a meeting as soon as possible to address this section in the rules and regulations dated the 10th of October but signed October 6th. 6th by the chairman and the joint chairman, secretary, Mr. Waddington. Yeah. You didn't say as soon as possible? I said, yeah, I said as soon as oh. possible, but I said and, and other issues. Okay. So we tell them what that issue is up. Uh, point of information, I understand there is a joint board meeting on October 22nd. Maybe we need to put a date before October 22nd. Friday, Saturday. That's what we're trying except, to do. We except, have contact and we can't resolve that now. Can we vote on this motion, please? Friday, Saturday. Well, well, it is up to the joint chair call meeting. Roll call. Meet 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 Mr. Dapper and Mr. Brown. Yeah. Mr. Roland Molinar. Yes. Mr. Lisa Harris Warren. Hallelujah, yes. Mr. Liliana Blado, do you have Yes. Mr. Robert W. Ross, Jr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. We have seven, 14 years to have the joint board share, Mr. Alicia Wells, to convene a meeting as soon as possible to address this Restriction dated October 10th, signed October 16th, there are seven Mr. Washington Secretary, among other issues that need to be corrected. And we add to that vote is that we know who right here is sitting now, that sometime the joint chair will establish a date for a meeting, and 24 hours before the meeting starts, they change for something else. So we need to coordinate with Mrs. Wells to find out of a day that she can keep it. Or wait until the 27th. Anybody have a problem with it? Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Excuse me. What were you saying, Mr. Williams? Excuse me. No, I was trying to get the agenda. I hear everything you said, but I think we're all aware that we have some issues that we need to discuss. So I wanted to recommend, I was going to amend the motion, but since I remember what I said, I'm still not talking about it. I am recommending, um, and I'm, I'm making a separate motion that the meeting, the petition by this district to take place on Saturday, October 25th, 25th at 10 o'clock, either via video conference, if, it's, um, if we're able to, to get a quorum present in one location. So, um, second. 
Moving on second, uh, are we going to address clearly so Mr. Wells and members can know he's speaking with the video conference and who's going to get the location of the video conference? I'll, I'll take the response. So you will be a lot for us, yes. except that all of us sitting here right now agreeing and asking her to convene a joint video conference meeting to address these and so and others at a particular time, the 10th of the 25th of October. My, my, my motion is to, come to convene uh, uh, the morning of the 10th of the joint board on Saturday. But the, the, uh, I'm also placing a motion that if the boards cannot physically meet in one location for experience to host this meeting that we do it on video conference. And we'll in, in, in order to save some marshals. Marshals? No. Marshals. Pick them up. Pick them up. Oh, okay. no, no, no. I'm saying, if we, if we really want to have a joint meeting, you don't want to get caught up in reservation, transportation. You have opportunity to have kept video conferences with BIT or other locations. I don't want us to get caught up after we agree on a time and a place with somebody that said they can't get a flight over here. And you don't have no money to come over. But if you have your video conference site located and time and date, that is all we need to make specific. And don't change about travel because somebody will say, they can't have a reservation, they can't get a flight. Or they're going to tend to see. So if you set up your conference, we live here, they live in St. St. John. Each of us or all of them can jump up when they leave and leave because you're wasting money for somebody to come in for 10 o'clock and want to crack the gun, we don't resolve anything. So I I don't know, but my motion still stands that to convene a meeting um, in person, but the option is that if we can convene in, 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 in person, that will be agreed by video conference. That's my motion. No problem. Okay. Second question. Uh, hmm? okay. A question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Um, is the BIT going to be available on a Saturday? I am going to send that in right now to say Okay, and my second question is, yes, if Mrs. Answer. Wells refused to call a meeting, can the vice chair, which is Ms. Moorhead, call a meeting in her absence? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, well, now we have this My next question is, um, I know that the next meeting should be in St. Croix. Since this is an emergency, can we here decide for, for core purposes, do, are we are willing to travel to St. Thomas and, and have a St. Croix core? These are just questions. I am not getting into any argument with anybody. Oh, thank you. Um, my recollection is that the, the, the request for the joint board meeting from the joint board chair was that they gave us two dates and that, that the meeting would be held in St. Croix. Um, so, again, I, I think that the initiative of the joint board chair was and the 25th was one of those dates, I think. The 27th. 27th, yeah. Uh, we are not saying the 25th, right? The 27th. Right. But the meeting is, the, this of our original email, that meeting is supposed to be held in the So. Wow. And, and based on the law, it's supposed to be held in the same place. Yes. So then, what you're saying, if they don't be available for the 25th location of Mr. Williams, and then by the 27th, if nothing has changed, this board needs to take a lead and decide that a district that we are going to allow the members to do what they custom do pass track. We're not telling people who to vote for. Because I have a bigger opportunity, Mr. Ross, and Mr. Williams have a better opportunity if they go to a three, four in place and they can remain in the work, but they don't have to stay in the place. But if you're going to restrict a person for re-election, and you don't restrict candidates for the same position as from being in there, then you create an arbitrary and capricious position that you're in a problem. So then it would mean that I have the option of not having Mr. Webster there to help him, and I could stay home and go and vote early 
and come on the building. Or then I can wait until the voting on the election day, I go and vote and do nothing in the pool. It's not over pool. Mr. Chair, yeah. I, I so think that's what happened. I think we're, we're discussing our job on the end. Yeah. Can we move the question, please? Can I look at the right here? Thank you. You ready? Any yeah, other objection? No, sir. There's no objection, right? No. So we agreed that the 25th, 10 a.m. video conference, Mr. Williams will get the location to discuss this prohibition of the section dated October 10th, signed October 16th, Mr. Wallace and Mr. Washington to address that particular issue and other issues. We understand clearly what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Any question? Roll call, Mr. Webster. There was no objection. So I want to make sure we understand clearly no objection. So uh, the, um, we have a motion. Yes, sir. Um, at our last meeting, we voted to allow the BI Action Group access to the election and election night. And I would make a motion to expand that to include the reporting. Motion will make second. Movement second. Any objection? Object. Roll call. You understand what the motion is? You move to have the group that was supposed to be November 4th to, to expand it to include, expand it to include all the votes in order. Uh, point of information. Yes, ma'am. Before I vote, I need to know if we if we are just going to allow one member of the action committee and not have everybody in there disrupting the whole procedure. Because if we are going to all the people there, in in and out, then I would have to vote no. But if we allow one member with the camera, whatever we decide, then I can support that motion. I think this is more, Mr. O'Neill, it was made clear already, and we just took clearly from the correspondent, that no person of the action will be standing in the room. A camera will be placed in the room just as well as channel 12, and whoever is operating the function will be outside of the process we take into account. Question. What Mrs. happens to the policy that no cameras or cell phones are allowed in the voting area? We always allow press access to the counting and canvassing ballots. We have multiple signs up. We have a written procedure that we're dictating to all the people who are looking at the polls. For those of you who haven't gone to the polls, trainers work and think that no cell phones are allowed in the polling place no exception. That doesn't mean that they're not allowed there when books are being canvassed, but while people are voting, there is no cameras allowed. It's, again, a written policy. We've already told the judges for the, for the, we've already told the judges for, for West, the other judges, the training is going to be meeting on Thursday, I believe. Tonight, I'm sorry. And that's, you know, that's always been the policy. It doesn't exclude anybody from election night, which is the first time any votes will be canvassed. But I understand clearly the letter that was written by the action group, the letter that was written to Channel 12, the response that came from Mr. John, instead of the young man who do all the stuff there, the standing down, the young man who is supervisor, they walk through how they're going around the cables in and out the video outside because they intend to have two cameras, I mean two cameras, two big screen televisions to see the results and see the content. On election night. On election night, yeah. I'm not, nothing okay. I'm not talking so about, about, about make sure we talking about early voting, which is where people vote. You're talking about having cameras someplace where we have already dictated a policy that they cannot be. There are like 20 signs up in the in the office where we're having early voting. It's like printed signs that we have printed because the board decided we were printing these signs. And there's a written policy for all of those who have seen the policy for um, that we are having the judges enforce. We can't say one thing and do another. So then Mr. Ross, before we go, so your concern is cameras similar for the general election be informed of the early voting observation. And basically that portion is prohibited because you cannot video or take pictures of individuals casting the vote as they would be doing in early voting. We have voting. disallowed in the past. Yeah. We, 
Okay. We have disallowed in the past cameras in the voting area, whether it's taken a picture of someone Great voting. Medicine. Can I? Sure. Whether it's taken a picture of somebody voting, there have been judges who have been asked to be on camera by the press. They have refused, and we have refused any member of the press who has been at, at, well, at the polling places I've been at, and as far as I know, other places, that from taking pictures inside the polling place. They can take pictures outside, you know. All the press is invited and has always been welcome at the canvassing of the votes, but not during the voting process or where the voting process is taken on in any precinct. The law has designated the election office in St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John as polling precincts for early voting. So thus that policy should be enforced there. I understand. I'm not talking about So I understand what you're saying. So okay. we're taking basically on the record that the concern is that we're not in a position or position to the counting of the ballots at election night. Because the only voting, the, the only voting observation and video is in difference to what we agreed. So basically what we're saying is that for the purposes of being consistent, you shouldn't be able to video or take pictures inside of the or, or the voting No precinct. cell phones are allowed in any voting well, yeah, precinct. Sure. That's a voting precinct. So it shouldn't be in there at all. Correct. Well, that's what one of the criteria we say. So people don't get the misunderstanding when they put it in the paper and they knew that we don't want uh, transparency. It's just that our rules and regulations prohibit cameras and video of actual voting as opposed it's to the country. Not just actual, actual voting, it's the polling precinct. Yeah, Whether I understand. Whether it's voting or it's a judge hugging their worker, that's not allowed. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but they can take pictures of judges yeah. hugging their worker. Okay. Yeah, I understand. 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 Yeah, I Representatives can be there as they were yesterday in early voting, but they cannot pull out a camera or a cell phone and do anything with it within the precinct. And that's the judge's responsibility, and that's why we tapped the uh, oh, officials yeah, yeah, yeah. this morning earlier. Mrs. Whitaker, according to what the gentleman told from the police department, was here. A lieutenant Vanderpool, and the next year, I don't know her name. He said he was invited to be a say yes because he wanted to clarify how we address the same thing up to the board. Because therefore, then, when I am available a camera or video or cell phone, is in there, the judge can only tell him don't do it. So there's no enforcement of it, absent enforcement. So the gentleman was here, he said he's going to excuse himself. I called Chief Paris and explained to him that for the officer to come back and up to now I see none. So the judges have the same authority to discourage it, but physically, how are they going to stop it, absent law enforcement? And that is why I wanted Mr. Lieutenant Vanderpool to remain here, so you could have heard what we said, because he's telling me this morning that he was here, and that he submitted the proposal and the planning to the chief, the deputy chief, then to the chief, then to the sister commissioner, they have to wait for the commission to sign the procedure, so I said, you need to be here so you can hear the concern that you are just raising with Mr. Webster and Mr. O'Neill, so they can understand that they need to be present enforcement-wise at the early voting site when the judge said, look, Mr. So and so, you cannot use a phone in here, you can't video in here, or Mr. V.I. Action Group, you can't bring your equipment here to video it. So up send that. This is what we need to get clarified. So the officers are not here. And this body now have to vote on whether they want to extend the same invitation to be an action group inside the early voting precinct as opposed to looking at the content. And those are two distinct different. They're not synonymous to me. It's right. It's right. not synonymous. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, and I, I believe that, that, that the presence of a camera with people are vo voting is a federal issue. So right. I, I can't, even if this board made a decision in its wisdom to allow it to happen, it, 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 we, we wouldn't run a fall of federal I just put it at the end. That's not what I talk about. At the end and the beginning. That's not what I talk about. Yes. 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 Yes.
opening what? Opening the, the, the seals for, for the emergency event to allow for the boats in. When that seal is broken, and at the end, when that seal, the new seal is being placed on, that's all they want to do. So you want to be very Okay, well, the well, well, rules are not new yet, and the folds have already closed. It has nothing to do with that. If that's how it's done. Show me a lot, tell me a lot. Where it's in place. But we just and said that in. That you were in there yesterday, and you saw all can we finish with what the person was saying? But you speak here the same thing, everybody. If we let everybody <laughs> speak until they finish, we complete what we're doing. But I don't want to, to be. Uh, but I'm saying this is not me. I sit quiet here because I tell me I don't want nobody to talk. I want everybody to talk. I agree with me. Everybody here is over 25 years old. But we can't talk all together. You see the same Jesus talking? Okay? So I'm saying <laughs> if we allow one person to speak at a time, Mrs. Mohan. Mr. Ross, Mr. Williams, Mr. Mung is simply trying to explain, and Mr. Website saying that's not what he's twisting and talking about. That's right. So, Mr. Yes, can you finish, please? So, what Mr. Website is saying is different to what we were thinking. Mr. Molina is saying, whether or not we stand with the law and policy state, his concern was that the VA action group or any media person mm -hmm. would be able to see that the machines are sealed before the polls are open and closed after the voting is taking place. If we don't want to agree on that, again, that's another situation. So we let Mr. Webster explain what his intention was, or we look at Mr. Yeah, let, me, let me explain what, what my motion was. This, what is going on right now is not business as usual. So all of this thing about cameras, camera here and there, that becomes like moot. And we're not talking about when people are voting, we're talking about before the polls open, after the polls close, so people can feel more confident in this thing. Okay, that this thing is not going the way it's supposed to go. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yesterday, Mr. Molinar, uh, Mr. Webster, and myself, we were practically there. Uh, from the inception of the opening to closing of the poll, because we are new, and I can talk to myself, I don't need to talk to them. And I want to know the process, I want to make sure that I am well informed so that when people ask me out there, I know what to say. I observed a situation with one member of this board and the VI Action Group. Uh, I mean, they were actually going one after the other. I made the recommendation to the VI Action Group, as they said they're going to write a letter, they're going to request for the policy. I said, you have every right to do that, um, but don't get involved in this back and forth because we are in a process. I told him that today we were going to bring it to this meeting and make a decision. All the VI Action Group wanted to do was, everybody had gone, we were closing the machine. There were other people there from other candidates also concerned about the procedure. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to take a picture of the seal that we took off and the seal that we were going to put into the machine. There was no voting. There was no people from the outside rather than just the VI action group and some other people who were concerned about the security of the machine. And we said we're going to... We, and I said, we will make this appointment, this meeting today, and let this board make a decision whether we allow them to take a picture of the seal before and after. And that's the issue right now. I perfectly understood what was going All I'm saying, if that's the wishes of this board, it still has to go in front of the joint board because there is already a policy in place. You can't change a policy because you decide to do it on one side of this, of this, of these islands. So the then, policy in place, the policy of the VI action group. The what policy is in the office, as I told them yesterday, he could have gotten it from um, the spot. She said, I spoke to her, she said she would give it to him. I don't know what happened. The policy is there. Like I said, we've already presented that policy to the judges. If we're changing something, it has to be done in writing because we have already adopted a policy by the joint board. Whether we wish to change it is a different question as to whether or not it exists. 
Okay, well, what would we understand as we want to? If we agree that we want to address the policy for the joint vote, this will be another item added in the agenda, among other things that we did okay. okay. Simply put, if I finish, simply put, if it is only for the purpose of demonstrating the transparency in before and the after, with the individuals in the media, with a camera or cell phone, or via action group, I don't have a problem with them. Showing the people what the machine looked like before the polls were open, when it was doing it, and then after the poll was closed. And that's where I was stuck. So to allow any media, telephone, or printed media to be inside where the voting is going on, I'm not supporting that. So we can move on from there. So and nobody was talking about it. I wasn't talking about when voting was going on. And as I explained to the uh, action group yesterday, that is the policy in place. I didn't adopt the policy by myself. I don't even know if I voted on the policy because it's been a long ago that that happened. So if we want to change the policy, motion to table this and have it addressed. Yes. We, already have a we already have a motion for the board to allow the action group or any person to video before the polls are open and after this But that motion's out of order. It can't can be out of order. I haven't been talking about that. But, but how can we vote on a joint board policy? We're not voting on a joint board. We are voting on our board okay. decision to take it to the joint board to see the joint board would agree. What our position was here? We have a position in St. Croix sometimes okay. that is completely right. different. Right. So if this board agree with what we discussed, this would go to, among other things, to the joint board to see if they want to have it done. Okay. So Mr. Webster would call a roll and his motion, and we vote accordingly whether we agree or not. We so vote. And then we power it to, we to the, the joint motion? board. To expand the action group access to a through the election, the election need to include all the votes. That's not the motion. Hold on a minute. Can we get clear? We had a lot of discussion about that before. What I think we agree is that the extending the invitation for the before and the after to be an action group or any other person from the media to observe the machine before the polls are open and after it is being closed. That was what I was saying. Let's yeah. go. So what? So you move the mic? I'm sorry. Hello, don't work for me. So, 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 process to include early voting before the polls are open and after the polls are closed. Only. Only. No shit. Let me come in. So we're going to start the motion. Because what we, what we vote to agree the condition, the context of the motion is to extend access before the polls are open to early voting and after the polls are closed, closes. And should not be included. I don't think one group of people should be included. If we're speaking about the day before and after, I think any media post would have the source of the daily news. Should we be considered? Well, I'm asking, well, I'm asking three times I said the already, but he said that. Amendment to Mr. Moyne, Mr. Webster's motion. I would like to amend the motion that this motion is presented to the Joint Board for us to have a pharmacy group and pharmacy in place. I so move. That doesn't tell us what the motion is. The men, if you want to amend the motion. If there is a second, no second, let's move on. If you want to amend the motion to say what. Chairman Bryan says, because as a chair, he can't amend it. But I, amend I amended my motion the way it was. Nobody seconded it. So yeah. somebody can't amend it. Can you release your chair and let it go by you? You can take over right there. Okay, good. Move on. What is the amendment? Well, the motion is... Well, the motion is... I amended it, but I'm the chair right now, Mr. Mahoney. My suggestion in a motion form was that we include all media well, that would be an action. So, that so would be action. So move. Is there a second? second? Is there any second. objection? Objection. Roll call. Roll call. And the amendment. And the roll call and the amendment. Mr. Deborah Denver Brown. Here. Mr. Rural Molinar. Yes. Mr. 
Be desires more than. Abstain. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is everyone going to be Nope. No. Now yes. Is there any idea what I am? Absolutely not. So I have two no's, one not voting. Not voting. <laughs> and four yes. Motion goes offer the amendment is on to the first please. The amendment uh, passed. Let's vote on the motion now. Oh, roll, uh, roll talk. I have the letter written down. Do we hear in the yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the roll talk, Mr. Oh, and the motion. And the motion has amended. And the motion has amended. Can you read it, please? To expand the election group access to the election process to include early voting and to also include for other media to be included. No, no. Before no, the polls no. are open and after the polls are closed. Thank you. Only. Okay. Only. Only, right. Roll call. Roll call. Yes. Oh. Uh, yes. Mr. Ross, point of uh, position. Uh, he, he read the main motion, but he didn't read the amendment to the motion, which was your amendment, which passed. Yeah, now the motion includes the amendment. I was not on the record to show that the you wanted to read the motion as amended? Well, I just wanted to read the amendment, the motion as amended. That's what that I'm says asking. that, that it is the it. joint vote for further conservation. No, that, that, that didn't pass. What, what was your amendment? My amendment was that this be referred to the joint votes uh, for their approval so we can have a uniformity uh, rules okay. and procedure. That didn't I, I basically said the same thing. Yeah, but I didn't get a second, so we go on. That's what we voted on. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want me to read the whole thing, right? The amended act and the other. Uh, the whole discussion of the table around us having to give it to the joint board because it's a joint board policy. We can take a vote as uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's go to the to uh, Mr. Mr. Ross one Webster to read the motion as amended. Let him read. Let's take a vote and then we can go back to the joint board. Mr. Webster. 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 Mr. That's the full motion as amended. Sorry. I have a roll call. No, uh, we have a roll call. No, that was a roll call. We had a defunding amendment. I'm sorry. Roll call and the motion as amended. Is there any objection? Mr. Okay. Mr. Delbert Amber Brand. Yeah. Mr. Ramon on. Yes. These are his morning. Yes. Mr. Leonardo, how do you mean? Yes. Is it Rupert W. Ross, Jr.? No. No. Mr. Leonardo, say yes. Mr. Raymond, you would have no. No. Can I have two no's? That is anything. One is one member abstaining. Let me see that motion, please. The motion as amended has been approved. Mr. Chair, you can take over the chair again. Thank you. Oh, Before we go on any further, we want to let the record show that Mrs. Whitaker is the only for which I have for I don't want the record to show she's not here. Um, that's my. Go ahead. Does this mean we're not presenting it to the joint board because there's still nothing in the You remember we agreed? Among other things, with other things to take to the joint board. When we get to the joint board, it's one of them. Okay. If no, we get to the joint board, a motion can be made to let them know we voted on here okay. to see the whole joint. If that was the wish of Mr. Neil, we can still take up and some of the to all of us to let them know this board is in Korea, we can do XYZ, and if they're going to do the same instance. I don't know if they have a chance. Mr. Chair, I have a question. 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 Mr. Chair, I have a question.
Chair, yes, ma'am. That's Ms. Boyd. Want to make a motion? On no, I just want to be clear. He's put on the record that that's what we're doing. That was the intention when we discussed it. Exactly. Well, that's what I thought, but it okay. wasn't part of the motion. So no. I'm just clarifying for the record that that was finally after all that discussion was. So anyone of us in the prevailing side can make a motion and let them know who did so. I have no problem with you. Um, we have to, uh, I can see, we will not move forward to the website for testing and readiness via the uh, with master, channel for and UAT course, and this is good. Um, I think that um, we had agreed that we would have got a report from Mrs. Stock. I know that's what you got to tell us. Yeah. If they uh, made the arrangement to have Ms. Um, Heinz month on website to make sure that we have these website tested before the November election so that we don't have a plan. We didn't have the website and master being tested to be sure that we can move information up to bring it back down to the screen of faith. So we probably had the last time we got the word master. We not had a signal available. So Mrs. Bevan from BIT and we could have gotten information on site so we could have seen television. So I don't know if Ms. Whitaker could money can bring us up to date on how far you have gotten with the testing and the dates to be certain, please. Pleasant good. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just to note, um, Ms. Hikes, that I'm the point of contact for the AUSA Master. She has already created the landing page for the general election. Um, so that's already been created. Um, several weeks ago, it was already created. So that page will be on the night of election, um, basically uh, displayed. So we're all set with the webmaster. So we said, all set created the place. The requirement was to be tested there before the election. That was the discussion we had being tested. I think that's what we said. We don't want to date an election for those who don't know. And then Ms. Bevin or the people from BIT who come with us can get the information and bring it down. So we need to make sure that Mrs. Heisman or the webmasters test this site before the night of election so we can have it. I, just to clarify, I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm no expert, but I am a person who works in. Okay. Design, and I know design websites, but um, the, the thing about it is. What happened last election was that the landing page for the primary election results was not created. That is the issue. It's up there, that's going to be displayed. When she sent the results, she'll then she will upload that and you'll see that on the website. So if we understand you clearly, whatever is needed, when the polls are closed, from that time on, that site will be available. So when we start reading out the results by precincts and polling places, that information will readily pipe to Channel 12 and additional television outside of the screen. That's what I understand. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, yeah, Mr. Wayne, sir. Mr. Nemes on here. Following from what the Chairman said, in terms of ensuring that the system works, as the votes are tallied through the computer, those votes are going to be able to, at a certain point, a time that is designated, be uploaded to the webmaster. The webmaster in turn will upload them to our website so that the media can transmit that information via, um, via the, the television outside. So that if I'm sitting outside, after we read five polling places in this district, that information is uploaded. Yeah. No, we, because again, let's go back to and the not here, but we do not have a network situation. It's not the same as before. And that's the she fact. will be, once they all get together, she will display the results in the format, which will display the names of the candidates. We're not going to get, um, we don't have the network access between us and the other, um, uh, and the other office. Historically, we had network access, and it would be uploaded simultaneously. We do not have that now. For, so, that'll, that'll so, so, that's yeah. Right. yeah. But what, sure. what you can, what you can do, you can um, you can table this and have that the Coverdale address it, and you can also have for any clarity have ESNS address it as well. Also, ESNS also have their own policy about when and which you know we had it in a situation where we want to make sure that we had the result in St. Thomas, the territories. So once we see the factor of St. Thomas, everything be put together and then will be displayed on the screen. Um, okay. But it won't be assigned. It won't be you know five polls read and then up on this website. It's not going to happen. Okay, we'll see, and that's our concern, and that's the point that we're trying to make here. That is what the board had requested and has been requested. So, whatever we need to do to make that happen is what we have to do. Yes, and this is not going to dictate whether or not that happens. 
So not that they're going to dictate, but it's um, it's a matter of the network capabilities and how it was set up. So the larger discussion with both the programmer and the SNS, um, you can speak to Alexa directly about that, and you can speak to Dr. Carver about those things that are brought up. Before we go any further, I made it clear the last time. And I thought I already, I don't trust Dr. Coverdale, her experience don't convince me that she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And you keep saying she's a territorial coordinator. If you read her rules and regulations that she just put forward again, things that she wants to do is not her authority, the board's authority to do these things. And again, now, we know before that you could have got information. As they read, you see those say That's what we made clear to Mrs. Fox and um, when they had a problem with the webmaster, the signal. If they don't get this information up to the set, you can't take down nothing. Why will you be we waiting for Dr. Coverdale and ES and us to tell us what we're going to get? We paid for something. They must be able to, the night that we close the poll and they start reading or, or preset X, you get the information goes right up to the public. You're not going to have people sitting now and saying when the polls are closed, you wait until 10 o'clock in the night to tell what you're going on. That's a joke. So if somebody needs to let me fax, ESNS, Dr. Coverdale, and Mrs. Uh, what's her name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heinzman. That's Ms. Heinzman, that's a lady in charge of the contract. That lady had a contract before. This board members got here before Ms. Fox came in. So I don't know who between the lines developed a new communication contract with Mrs. Heisman. That needs to be clear. We're making it clear again. I am not accepting the condition that nobody will intervene and come at all a second party to information. We want that the information is read when the prisoners are called and the machine reads that information, it goes right through there. That's why we have two television on site. So anybody who changes that will have to tell us who authorized the motion. Mr. Mr. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yeah, I'm confused as to what ENS has to do with us having any capabilities, any capabilities on this island with any interconnectivity. Let me clarify. Um, the computer in the supply room is what's called the ERM um, computer, and all and, and St. Thomas does that. So there is actually a central computer. The results are that it's, it's a it's an ERM computer. Um, it's not it's not on a network. We well, just said Thomas was replaced the ERM. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yes, yeah, so I said Saint Croix is where the main computer is, and the results are then faxed over. It's uploaded into the computer on our island because our computer is a central computer. They they're not gonna they need our computer in order to get the results. Um, so it's faxed over the night. Uploaded and then those results, the territory races are added together. So Except that we don't need to wait until St. Thomas results to determine what happened in St. Paul. Well, we, for, for the territorial races, we would want information from St. Thomas. So for our territorial candidates, we would want that information. And that will come later. We can have district of St. Croix meeting for government, delegate of Congress and large from St. Croix and district done right away. We don't have to be held back because they're waiting on some board from St. John with some information. We need our information from St. Croix as we read them to be put outside. For every office in this district, governor, delegate to Congress, at large, and all the district senators should be made available readily as we get them, as opposed to waiting for somebody in St. Thomas to send something to our computer in St. Croix. That's not the exactly. one. Mrs. Moore, sorry. Further question, and then I'm done. Has anyone in the administration of the election system consulted with Corinne Plaskett on this or John Abramson because this was able to be done before? Not this under this abuse system. Had, but the contract has been in the building system? But the contract is still there? No, no, no. Plus I was just to see, see what it, how it was capable, how we were able to do it. Before, before we were able to do it because it was on a network and those results were simultaneously uploaded as the cartridges were you know, received. Right. It was a network access. Um, it was explained that because we are moving to federal you know, EEC machines and so on, that we will not move, we don't want it for. Well, who is this we? Who is this we you said? We let me, let me, let me is the board, let me, not we. Let me go. Before I came on board, um, obviously you guys decided that ESS would be the contractor, contract was issued, what have you. Um, it is, was determined, I don't know how, because it's before I came that they would not, that these two interfaces would not be on a network. Um, 
and that who the who the top I, I don't know. This is it's the top. Yeah, so I don't know this. So when um, it was first brought to us, I and uh, like say made a representation. Um, Dr. Covey also made that representation as well that these are not networked, and so. A motion? Yeah. No, we need to clarify one so, we can clearly explain what she's saying. Yes, because before we she move on the motion, but, but not that she doesn't know, she's telling portions yes, that she knows about. Yes. So I'm saying, if we, the board, haven't authorized Mrs. Spat, Ms. Mm -hmm. Coverdale, or Alexa to change any process here, somebody's out of line with that. Because I know that I've read the contracts for um, Ms. Uh, what's her name again? Heinzman. They were operating under a different name. I know for a fact that the election night she could get a results reading there. This networking thing, I don't see how no way anybody in the right mind sitting here with Arthur Redmond's facts or Dr. Covenant or anybody to change that procedure not known to none of us. Nobody here in the right mind will go along with that. Mm -hmm. So I want to know who changed that and who authorized the change. And, and I, I agree with you, but my concern is also, and I want it on the record so the public is aware. This board, as far as I know, and I've been absent from medical issues and stuff, but as far as I know, has never had a meeting with Dr. Coverdale, Miss mm. Heif, Miss Heifman, or anybody else. This mm. was unilateral stuff done um, by the administration of the election system. So I, you know, I'm at a loss unless somebody can tell me mm -hmm. that this happened in my absence at a district or a joint board meeting. I've never heard. Even if it didn't happen, Mrs. Mohead, I have made many questions and attempt to district board meetings and joint board meetings for Dr. Covey. Last time, Dr. Covey was starting something on the phone, and I said I want something in writing. She disappeared and never came back. I spoke to the lady twice. She yes. came one time and asked a question, and she got upset and she closed the door and left. The next time I tell myself, we need Dr. Covey, and all this, nobody gets her to come. Again, we asked another question. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I said, well, so what does that mean? I said, you're born in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, uh, now, let me finish, please. I want to no, record the clip. This is a cross on Mr. O'Neill. Let me speak, please. Yeah, yeah, we want the record to be clear. Mrs. Mohead has asked a question about Dr. Coverdale. If you don't want to hear, I can't stop you from here, but I'm saying the record must be clear that attempts were made by me and other members because other members here said they never even seen how Dr. Coverdale. And it's clear that I've asked Mrs. Fox to get Dr. Coverdale and Alexa on the line. She will tell us that Alexa said, I haven't seen or read any written statement from Alexa, ESNS, Mr. Coverdale, or even from Dr. Coverdale in writing what was done out. That record must be produced. It isn't that we didn't want it. If she ain't here, I can't hold her bring her there. A question, Mr. Chairman, Lisa, keep well, could you have a question through the chair, and then I've been asking for a motion. Could you have a social answer, please? Uh, through the chair, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask uh, my mentor in this board, Who? Mr. Ross, okay, so. to tell me or tell us if the supervisor of an election have authority to make certain decisions that does not involve the, the board because these decisions are based on the election system and not on the board of election. I need to be clear on that, Mr. Ross. Say so only for that, the board works the election system. No, 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 no. I know that the board works for the for the. Uh, I mean, the supervisor and the deputy work for the board. Sometimes they feel that they don't, and sometimes they just. Dis dis Disrespect us. That's not the point. My question is whether the supervisor have the authority to make decisions for and by herself to deal with certain issues. Then they can just don't read because they don't have the instruction from the whole board voting on what they should do. And that's what's been going on. So if we allow that, that's the problem. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would like to make a motion to direct the authority to be whether the supervisor, deputy, or, and all the other people involved, that they get together, come up with the plan, and that whatever plan they put in place, that the system, the website, uh, um, and all the TV or whatever, uh, be tested the night before election so that we know the system is working and we know that everything is in place. But that 
system should be tested the night before. I saw no objection. Objection, and I think the uh, issue, Mrs. O'Neill, is that the requirement by law that certain things take place before the election begins. Therefore, under Title 18, the thing is uh, subsection 4 makes reference to the authority of this board over the supervisor of election to perform so and so on. Any action taken by the supervisor or the deputy have to be on the supervision of the board. Absent that, they're going to run wild out of time. That's what I'm saying. But they reckon to come up with a plan presented to us and then we found it. But there was no second list to one. But I'm saying, you're not listening to what I'm trying to say. I am listening to you, it, but you said less mandate, less require this, and then we are going to give to saying, present something to them to say, this saying, is what we want and this is what you have to I am do. Saying this what, I'm saying, Mr. O'Neill, I'm simply saying to you, this board. They erect the supervisor, Mr. Terry, and the deputies about what we want them to do. But that's exactly what I'm saying. Let's direct them to put something in place when whoever have to be involved, present it to us, and then have it tested the night before election so we don't have the problem we have with the primary. That's all I'm asking, but if you all don't want to go, then move on. It is not that we don't want to. We want to be clear what you want done. So could you put in writing the thing that you want this board to tell the supervisor, the deputy supervisor, that you want her, Dr. Powell, ES and S person, and the board to meet to discuss what we want them to do? That's what you want them to be done? Yes, ma'am, Mr. Mohead. I move that, you know, that we write a letter to the supervisor and let her staff indicating to her that she takes no action with respect to the election without a board vote Thank authorizing you. that action. Thank you. The motion we need to call Mr. William Walsh, assist us, please. Nobody said. You second it. <sighs> Move and second in there. We we'll get that. Is that terrible here now? So you have to clean the letter with the contents. Mm -hmm. Will you add this to the system? No, I think you have to tell us what's going on. Can I finish this one? Can I finish this one? Sure. Mr. Terrell is right here listening to what Mr. Mohair is saying. She, Mr. Mohair is suggesting that we write a letter. When she we, I guess it means that the this board agree, and I would sign a letter to Mrs. Fox telling her that before she take any action or whatever, with respect to the with respect election. election that, that she, she has to have come to us and have approval of the board. So the contents of the letter basically we drafted and we sent it. So even though Mr. Whitaker is here listening, we want it and write it to the supervisor we send a copy of everybody to look. Correct, because we can tell everybody everything all day long. And then, we don't take any action we don't have any documentation. Right. Because we have meetings and it seems like people act like they weren't at the meetings. Could I, could I say something? Well, no, you cannot. No. Mm -hmm. no. Um, Hold the um, word, please. Sure. But you finish this morning? Yeah. Uh, um, Mrs. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman I am not going to agree with that letter, but it's the same thing. I was saying, let's do the motion and present it to them. So, you know, the attorney yes. wants to put it in her word. I will allow them. I'm going to put it in my that all <laughs> Can you write the motion? Go ahead and write the motion. Let's move on. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Okay, um, just, just for everyone, what I'll do is forward an email. Uh, July 2nd, 2014, I asked Alexia what were the capabilities comparative to the Shutronic, and she expressed the difference between the results that will be generated the night of. What I can do is, it's a, it's a third of email, so what I can do is I can print out the email and have it prepared for you, so you guys can understand what Alexia's response was. You also have to, uh, input from his positive as well. So. Um, we had both this email exchange um, regarding the capabilities of the results of action night, which I look forward to you all from back from July 2nd, um, and then also the discussions. Again. So I can produce, I can forward all these emails to you all so you can see the discussion regarding capabilities for election nights from ESNS. Okay, and sure. Also that sounds good enough. Well. Except that before we get to this confusion, everybody want to bring all these sure. emails. But it's these can sound raised all along the line will continue to let Alexa and the phone talk to Ms. Fox or to talk to anybody that's other than the board members. Mm -hmm. When I speak with Mrs. Fox, she said, Alexa said, mm -hmm. or Alexa said, we told them, we showed them who to speak to as it relates to how the back, the ballots to be performed, Mr. Cabadelio, nobody up to this note, Ms. Fox, so nobody here at this board have had an opportunity to hear in a meeting when Mrs. Fox said she's going to call them, they will never know. 
So now we're hearing all these emails back and forth. So the record is claiming that we're going to send a letter officially to Mrs. Fox, the captain of the board members, and yourself. This is what the board is telling her to do. If I don't come and do the things without our approval, it's not a terrorist. That's basically what we're telling you. Yeah. Mr. Ross, you said. Um, yeah, I'd just like uh, to follow up on, on the comment made by uh, the supervisor, Whitaker. Um, the, the end results of those emails and primary night was that the, this board did not give the public uh, timely information on the election results. And my, my understanding of what he was seeking to address is how is this board going to correct what was done on primary night so that we can give timely election results to the community at the general election. What I heard you say is that we're going to do the same thing at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to do the same thing at the end of the day for the general election where we're going to um, consolidate, package the information, uh, and then set it out uh, at some predetermined time after the information has been collected. Um, unfortunately, for community and as archaic as some people felt the electronic process was, that allowed for instantaneous, timely information to the public. And I understand all this board wants to do is the same thing. We don't have the, cap the tech technical capability around this table to do that. But it is my position that we hire people to cause that to happen. Yeah, like I said, that person cannot do the electronic thing. That's not true. Sure. Well, I, I understand. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not comparing our system with you trust. I'm basically saying that all of these people that are on the system's payroll to cause the information to be readily and timely available to this community need to solve the problem. So you're saying that in terms of um, getting the technical expertise to make sure that the computers both speak to each other? They need to solve the problem. So that would be a trust that, 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 would be, that would be on ESNS and DIT because we cannot say that the supervisor and I would have the Technical well, you, you, you are part of our check, you are part of our process, you are part of our support system. But we need to solve the problem. Right. So you're saying a, con a contract that was, that was delivered to no, you? No, I'm you're saying, saying that you're saying that the supervisor needed to get the solution. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that, the, as I understand it, the members of this board and what the community expect mm -hmm. is that the results of the general election unlike the primary election, be made available in a timely fashion on election night. And somehow or the other, with all the brains that we have, it needs to be resolved. I don't know, the individuals are not interested in that. We need to address it and resolve it. And that's my only yes, concern. Mr. Ross, for the record, I'm sure the members is very clear this board. And I can say, I know, this nonsense that we say on the election set up, this system can do to try is a joke, it's a fraud. This DS200 puts out that thumb drive, it puts out that card, I mean a tape, and it has the ballast in the back. The same information that is recorded from the thumb drive as the official record goes on a tape. When they get that information in the, in the office and read it, that information should be sent right outside because that's what they're doing. The only problem they must be sure of that they have cleared the system of the information and the only new information was is coming from the thumb drive and the tape. They can do that. But they allow a bunch of people to interfere and obstruct and delay the whole process by using this foolishness. Alexa is saying that it cannot be done in comparable. A computer could do anything. And the machine can give you the information because it's right and the closing of the polls that the thumb drive and the cartridge is taken to the board of election. They take the thumb drive, put it in the machine, and it's right out. That information should be to go right outside the people. Where are we going back to the same thing to wait until Ms. Uh, Heinzman and this webmaster that are covered it? You got too much people involved in deciding the result of the election. That's what happened. And they're trying to hide behind 
a lecture and Dr. Kovalev. Who hired Dr. Kovalev to know what she can do? She tells me all the time. She walks to you here and when she comes, she don't bring the information. So we need to do the same thing that we were doing when we had a structural machine, reading a take a cartridge and put the information. So that can be done. What's the motion? The motion is to write a letter to the supervisor and the staff that prior to taking any action related to the conduct of elections, she must have a board vote approving Approving that action. Approving that action. You want to put a date so that you want to respond from them? Because we have no, no, because we said approving that action. The board has to approve it. Yeah, yeah because we already have it. I don't tell you. Even if I'm saying now, the time will be free now, and to get these who have masters and these new show up, what, what, you, what we want is to put a what they're trying to tell us. Okay, but that's no problem. I just want to make sure that that's because I don't think that should be a separate. Yeah, I want to relate right. that this, this covers everything. Everything, yes. Right. Not yes. anything about board approval, yeah. which is, should be understood by reading the law. But that's right. But it's not. So that's why I'm saying we need to put it in writing because if it doesn't happen, then we have a basis to you know, recount board. what you know what has been going on. Because we just tell people something verbally and they don't do it, and then we don't do anything thereafter. Keep doing it. Roll up. Take the problem. Do I have a friend? Yes. Roll up, Mona? Yes. Lisa Harris Morgan? Yes. Diana Pilari Doni? Yes. Robert Ross? Yes. Glenn Webster? Yes. 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 Yes, one of them. Mr. Chair, for the record, I want to speak. You want to? Yes, yes, yes. What we do is that you are here. You have to divide with me. Mr. Chair. You divide with Mr. Webster. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I want to leave here comfortable knowing that any one of you can give me peace of mind that when we leave from here, that the webmaster problem that we have, and that the system is going to be tested before and put in place, that that's going to happen under this letter that we're sending to the supervisor. In other words, I don't know if you understand, I know you know in Spanish, but the no, question is whether English. the webmaster is going to be in correct, in place, and ready to go so that we don't have that uh, problem. And the letter did not, I mean, the motion did not include that. And I want to know, for my own comfort, is that taken care of or not? Well, it, it apparently, that the discussion here is clear that that's what we want because motion. everybody here, Mr. 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 Motion. I know that the supervisor report at the next joint board meeting the status of making sure and ensuring that votes tabulated on election night November 4th will be made readily available through whatever system or design to have the information uh, transmitted outside of the election office and to the website for information as um, as soon as the votes are cast. So well, excuse me. As, as well. Move and second the final sign it clearly won't have it clear. Your motion is to make sure this revisor guarantees at the next one will meet the report. Whether it's the one hundred twenty fifth or the twenty seventh right. that she guarantees this board the children of Ojinata on election night when the polls are closed seven o'clock. For the first time they start to read a thumb drive with the result. That immediately thereafter, the information is outside to the voting population and media, outside television, whatever. I'm not saying that my, my motion is not to lock it into from the first stop, right? But the information has to be made, um, designed to be produced and, and published. Um, if, she, if, 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 if um, we, I agree with it from the first, but I don't know, I don't know what processes are necessary to get the information. My, my thing is that. We want to ensure that to um, that for the supervisor, for the supervisor to report back out to the board 
at the natural and one meeting, how that process is going to be handled. Yeah, right. okay. And to address it before you yeah. enter? Well, okay. it's got a lot of process at the next report. All right, roll call. Move of the supervisor report and the next board meeting. And that information on election night, the process by which is the information on election night is designed, produced, and published and uploaded to the website. I need to make sure you have the last word. Yeah. Anybody understand the motion? Mr. Williams, roll call. Mr. Dunbar, Amber, Brian. Yes. Roland, Mona. Yes. Lisa Hartmore. Yes. Liliana Bolado, the Odeon. Yes. The Luca Dolly Ross, Jr. Yes. Ben Westley, Marina D. Williams. Yes. Okay, and when we hear Mrs. Mohood, I come to you. Mrs. Um, Woodica, I'm sure I've been looking through some of these contracts. And the contract for the webmaster, or you call them with um, Heinzman, Barbara Heinzman, and some other company. Would you please make that information available to all of the members so we can read it? Because that contract has been around for some time. It has been amended again, and I saw that came into a property procurement was making reference to something in the report. So, why do people think I am reading over and I have been watching? So, I sit in quietly, calmly, but when the whole thing comes to the front, we can see what's in the book. Which, uh, there are a couple of contracts. The first contract with Mr. Adams, with Ms. Barbara Heinzman, and the amended motion that came from property procurement with the same contractor. We may want to amend the contract so it includes um, information for election night because her contract. Well, all information for that contract, we need to see them. Yeah, well, we could be yes, working with it. I move that we um, direct the supervisor to have all of these contracts with people to get all the way. Right. Motion, motion, the second. Second. What's the, I mean, morning on the second. The motion made by Mrs. Mohe that we have all the contractors relative to elections. Our contracts. Contract. No. What a contract. Oh, she said. Take it easy, not just a space. She said.